My heart is clapped at the love and the unity that's growing in the saints. It's like a fire burning bright, and I gladly rejoice. Same as three, three. The two men walk together unless they have made an appointment. Now, I, just, I read that from the New American Standard, but I, I really believe that the authorized version, the King James Version, and the New King James Version much more accurately capture the spirit of what the Lord is saying. They both basically say, can two walk together unless they are agreed? Mm-hmm. Right? That, that translation would have us understand this question this way. In order to walk together, two, have to be, two people have to be in agreement. Right? Absolutely. What immediately came to my mind when I read this is that what Paul wrote to the Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, I'm reading verses 14, 15, and 16. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness, or what fellowship has light with darkness? What harmony has Christ with Belial, or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever? Or what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. Just as God said, I will dwell in them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. We're to be in the world, but not of it. Obviously, we're to love the unsaved. We're to, we're to share the gospel. But the fact of the matter is, if we're not in agreement, we're not going to be walking the same path. If we're not in the same state of mind as another person, like the oxen of unequal strength or unequal size, when they're locked together, they can't go in a straight line. They'll, they'll, you know, what happens is they'll keep going off. Well, it's the same way. We're walking a path that is straight and narrow. And if you're walking that with somebody who is not spiritually right, they're going to pull you off. That's what Paul says. Listen, Paul says, don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Bad company spoils good morals. 1 Corinthians 15.33 it's certainly a spiritual truth that you can see it's apparent that it is much more common that the weaker person will cause the stronger to go off the path of righteousness rather than the stronger keeping the weaker on that straight and narrow path. That's why Paul said, don't be deceived, right? And the other absolute truth is that the people of God should be, are commanded to be, in agreement. Yes. Like-minded. No division. Have the same mind in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, Philippians 2.5. So if I have the same mind as Christ, and you have the same mind of Christ, and you have the same mind of Christ, we have the same mind. And we are in agreement. And we will walk together in a straight, narrow path of righteousness. But I want to make it clear, and we have to understand this in light of what Paul wrote in Romans 14. We can differ over certain things. I was just going to... Okay? I mean, you may think that black pants are nicer than khaki pants. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't... That's not what we're talking about here, right? It's it's only God's word that we have to be in agreement. Well, no, it's only the gospel that we have to be in agreement. I mean, this is... There is a foundation, and that is the gospel. So, read Romans 14. No. Pray Romans 14. Seek God's understanding for the fullness of that. Romans chapter 14. But let me make this clear that Paul wrote that, but he also wrote that we have to be in agreement about what the gospel that he re- was revealed to Paul, and he said is of first importance. Mm-hmm. We have to be in agreement about the gospel. So let me read that to you, all right? 1 Corinthians 15. I'm going to read verses 3 to 8. Paul says, For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures, that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time, most of whom remain until now, but some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared to me also. We need to believe in the revelation of God in the scriptures, the gospel. 
Well, is that important? Let me tell you what he wrote to the Galatians. But even if, this is Paul writing, he says, even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to what we have preached to you, this one, he is to be accursed. As we have said before, so I say again now, if any man is preaching to you a gospel contrary to what you received, he is to be accursed. Galatians 1, 8 through 9. That's serious stuff. Very serious. Very serious. And that's why it's so important to hear this command of God through John. In first, first, first letter of John 4, 1. And I'm paraphrasing, but it says, Test the spirits, for many false prophets have gone abroad. You better be testing what you're hearing. Okay? Mm-hmm. Making sure that what you're hearing is the word of God. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word have I hid, O oh God, in my heart. My heart, that I might not sin against thee. Deliver me.